back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, we are now switching gears to some politics, especially when it comes to Tobago's autonomy. That's a hot topic right now as we try to decide, you know, or try to see where things are going to go, especially for this year. We heard from the Prime Minister that the bill is going to be dealt with in Parliament. And we also heard from the Chief Secretary who said that they're sending some proposals, well, not some proposal, but some amendments, some changes, so a document basically that is supposed to be um, highlighting the differences between what's in the bill currently before Parliament and what was originally submitted to Cabinet in 2018. And um, we are yet to see that. Uh, the Chief Secretary promised to send that out by the end of January. Well, yesterday was the end of January and we have not seen anything yet um, in regards to that document and so on. Um, we haven't got any confirmation from parliamentarians that that document was submitted to them. So it's left to be seen what's, what's going on there. But in the meantime, as we are considering autonomy, as the talk of autonomy is around us again, we have to wonder, you know, is this the time? Could it really be this time that we are going to be getting autonomy or the autonomy that we want? Um, because we already do have some form of autonomy as it is. So for this conversation, I'm being joined by the political leader of the Class Action Reform Movement, and that is Mr. Ricardo <laughs> Phillips. So good morning and welcome to you. Good How are morning, you good morning, good morning, good morning. Candice, uh, Tobago Update, Tobago, Trinidad, the rest of the world. Thank you for having me mm -hmm. this morning. Great. So great to have you. Now, um, to be what, 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 first of all, what do you think about just our current conversation that's happening in Tobago about autonomy? We're here once again. Well, Candice, this is a, a, a circular conversation, I, I, I think, um, as far as the subject of autonomy and Tobago is concerned, because we've been having this for decades. Um, it's the first issue that, in my view, I would refer to as a national issue that is not discussed in a national sense. It's okay. not taken seriously in terms of the nation. This should be an issue that has been in the past and even now treat as a national issue. The entire Trinidad and Tobago having discuss, discussion on the issue of autonomy for Tobago based on the conversation and based on the, the, the proposals and based on the, the narrative that, that is out there, especially from the powers that be. Whoa. What we have is an imposition. We're trying to impose this as some kind of national issue when it has never been treated as such. I will tell you this though, that Trinidad has no idea what this autonomy and the discussion of autonomy is for Tobago, what Tobago is asking. If we are one country and we want to have some kind of control, and I have not against control, as a matter of fact, I think that it's important for Tobago to have some kind of control over its day-to-day -day activities. But that's not what people are speaking of, what people are, are talking of, especially those who are, are advance themselves, are, ascribe themselves as the expert on autonomy. They are talking about separation. They're talking about oil and gas. They are talking about, you know, this and that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the document before the parliament has nothing to do with autonomy. Uh, one could argue there's some kind of autonomy, but when you talk about autonomy and the, 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 the definition of it, you're talking about being free, you're talking about independent, you're talking about sovereign. None of that is part of what we're discussing. So I, I say it's a farce on the people of Tobago because it's not a national issue. We have had no uh, uh, advocate of autonomy have taken this to the point where it becomes a national issue. The, 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 yes, it's in the parliament, but the parliament have this on, you know, as another issue, not as a national issue of importance. And I think um, in Tobago, we have so many different versions of <laughs> this autonomy. So I've listened to the program recently with some young, some students, I think, uh, not students, but some young people discussing autonomy. And, and and it's just sad to see that they they think that is something, that they're onto something. And really mm -hmm. and truly, they, they has not, because there has not been the, the foundation, the groundwork set to say to take this from one stage to the next. So that we all have the one understanding, even though we agree or disagree, it has nothing to do with that. But we're understanding exactly what we're asking for, what we're debating and what we're discussing as a people in Tobago. I've said in the past, and I was saying again, that the subject of the question of autonomy and the subject rather of autonomy as discussed in the Tobago space is really a power struggle and has nothing to do with autonomy in the context of the meaning of the word. Um, it's, yes, I am supportive okay. of more administrative and legislative powers to the people of Tobago to carry out their day-to-day business. But that is not autonomy as we, as we, the argument is being put forward. All right. Now, what's 
there was another topic or another um, part of this conversation that has come up too in recent weeks was the announcement by the Prime Minister mm -hmm. that we are going to be treated with constitutional reform over the next six months. And uh, there was Dr. Vanish James who stated that, you know, this is a time for us to even have something put in our constitution that allows it to, 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 to have the, the powers that it needs to be able to govern properly or govern the way it wants here in Tobago. Um, what do you think about that? Well, a lot of this is, is, has to do with politics and trying to, to, to secure the legacy and so on, as far as, my, my, as, far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. the, the question of constitutional reform should never be a political advance by political parties or politicians. This should be a civil you know, um, undertaken. Because what you have is that I remember having a discussion, uh, being to some kind of symposium, a seminar before, where the UNC had uh, proposed constitutional reform. And one of the problems that the fundamental problems that the UNC has made, politicians have made, is that they talk about inviting other people to have the discussion. Constitutional reform is a partnership with all the stakeholders, the entire society. You partner with the society mm -hmm. where no one party, no one particular institution is the leader in the discussion. But you have a mediator and you have everybody part partnering or participating to have a, cons a discussion on constitutional reform. What we see here is people trying to secure their legacies. Um, the Honorable Prime Minister is doing that. It has been done before. And so there's no real heart in terms of ensuring that the people benefit from this. But everybody wants to secure their legacy. You cannot have constitutional reform uh, in, in, or the, the issue of autonomy for Tobago in a six-month period. This is something that will take two years, three years of constant debate back and forth with the people. Oh. And then if you want to add Trinidad, well, you should add Trinidad to the mix, it takes a, a little longer. So to talk about Tobago, part of it, uh, they're treating this as, if you notice, Candice, that this subject comes becomes very heated wrong election time. When it, as the election, I've said this before, as the election gets closer, the subject of autonomy for Tobago comes heated and everybody really, and all the pun, this comes out from the woods and everybody have their take and the say and so on. And it ain't gonna fool me. Because I know once you're talking about, uh, I, I understand the power struggle, I understand the, those who want to, to secure their legacies, but I also understand what is important for the people. And if you can make that distinction, then I, I have no problem. What you're talking about, you're talking about a glorified version of the teacher. Okay, fine, no problem. That's what it is. But when you talk about autonomy, there should be a separate and distinct discussion and a separate activity on the island of Trinidad and Tobago on the subject of autonomy for Tobago, if that's what you want. Those who consider themselves advocates of this, on the subject should put themselves out there and to rally the, 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 the nation, r rally the, the country in terms of let's have the discussion and let's start from here. This should be in the schools, in the churches, in, 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 in every aspect that you have the question of autonomy and you take, you get information, you get feedback and then you go out, you come again, you put it together and you come again. It's not about appointing, you know, committee to discuss constitutional reform, and it, it's, it's not going to work. I guarantee you it's, it has been tried before, and I don't know why we keep doing the same thing and, and, and expecting different results. I don't know. I really can't understand it. It has been tried before. It's not going to work. What the government responsibly should be in this case is that you, you, you ask civil society to create, you know, a committee or a group that's responsible, and you fund that. That's all the government should sort of provide the facility, the funding to ensure that there is no interference, there is no influence on the government in terms of when you talk about constitutional reform. Because you need, you need a mutual, you need people who understand, who fear, you need fairness in discussion the, the subject. And you're not only that, you need people to come forward. Because when you start political party having, advocating constitutional reform, and people start to, you know, pull back because they want to be associated with this and they want to be, you don't need that, you need. But then how do we do it? Because, you know, you, 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 in, in a way, you sort of need the politicians to take it to parliament where the law has to get to be changed. Yes. So then, then who leads it? Who should lead this process? And, and, and getting into the part, the part, the politicians is not a problem. That's mm -hmm. not our challenge. The challenge is the, the politician, like everything else, want to control everything. And that is not how society works. Um, you, the assumption is that, and it's a dangerous assumption, that when you speak, and you see, see it happening in Tobago over the years, there are those who appoint themselves as the speakers and the leaders for the big on certain subjects, certain matters, subject mm -hmm. matter. And then they come up with their own conclusion without the people's participation, without consultation from the people. And they take that dice of Tobago wants. We say Tobago wants autonomy. And based on the argument from since So Choi and beyond and so on coming up the road, that is what Tobago wants. And truth and in fact, there are a large percentage of the society that don't even understand 
what that actually means. Mm -hmm. So there's always a misrepresentation on the behalf of the people. So in the case where you want to have the discussion, again, you have the civil society where the government would appoint or the parliament would appoint a group of people that has nothing to do with parties' affiliation to, to just to manage this affair. All the political parties will have their says. All the churches will have their, their says. All the different groups will have their say. But in terms of how who leads it, I mean, leads it, sorry. And when you finish, that information goes to the parliament and so this is what the people want. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of approach. I'm not the expert in that. There are people out there who can tell you how to channel this properly, how to structure this properly. I'm saying, but the principle I'm talking about would create the fairness and independence on the subject that allow everybody to freely come and share your view. That is what we need. Anything outside of that is pure politics and, and, and you know, fast on the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, when we look at Tobagonians in general, we've been part of these discussions for so many decades, right? Not just years, but decades. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for quite a long time. And it seems as though there's a lot of people who have their, even their own understanding of what <clears throat> autonomy is or what what they think that we need for, um, what do they think that autonomy needs to look like. Because autonomy is really just having your own powers. So the, the extent of which those powers should be and in what areas, that's where there's a whole lot of, you know, different views. Right. Right. Um, but then, so how do we ensure that we, we capture the best viewpoint for what this autonomy should look like? Well, we have to, we have to remove ourselves from the rum, rum shop stage. We're in the rum shop stage of the discussion on, on autonomy. Because if you mm -hmm. put five, you randomly put five or ten people together and you ask the question, you get ten different opinions as, 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 as it is. What you want is some kind of consensus. Everybody will have to agree on it. As a matter of fact, when you, if you do this right, when you finish, you must have those for and those against. Mm -hmm. That is what you have. Those bring your argument for those. And when you're inviting people, you're inviting those who are for and those who are against. Not just everybody. Tobago wants autonomy. No. Those who are for make your argument and those who are against make your argument. So we are at the rum shop stage where everybody has an opinion and everybody thinks that they're expert. Nothing wrong with that because people are entitled to their opinions and so on. But when you have a matter that is important as this one, what you want to get is some point of consensus to say, well, okay, we have either 50, 40, 30,000 30, people or 25% of the island population supported that and next one. We don't have that data. And I'm surprised to see people like um, uh, Dr. James, Vanus James, who understand data okay. and the collection of data, you know, into the mix now of autonomy. This is something that should be ongoing for about two, three years in Tobago. It's not wrong at uh, election season. So people are trying to secure their own legacy rather than actually treat the real issue that is important to a lot of people in Tobago. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Those who fall and those who are against it, those who for those who are against, uh, sorry, are as important as those who fall. So in other words, do you think that we should do some referenda? Of course, you must so have a public referendum on this. Some, somebody, I, I remember I made a statement some time ago and somebody said there is not a um, there's no um, position in the, the constitution for a public referendum. We don't have to get constitutional approval for that. I mean, the island can organize the failure of the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the failure of the THA in this regard. Mm -hmm. You can take that up on yourself. Let's get your popular opinion on this. A popular opinion, we don't want no exactness. We want a popular opinion mm -hmm. because at the stance, it's a political, it's a power a struggle and it's not, it doesn't work as well for the people of Tobago. Now, on the other hand, Candice, while we talk about somebody, somebody, one would argue and say, well, more power to the, the THA. Yes, more power to the THA. But it's a scary proposition for me when you have a history of abusing that power, and you're asking me to give you more power, I, I, I'm scary. With great scary. power comes great responsibility. Of course, great responsibility. And not only that, when you talk about more power, you have to talk about how do you protect the people from those who want to abuse those powers. So this discussion on, on autonomy for Tobago, the discussion on constitutional reform must be consistent with pro constitutional protection and guarantee for the people. So do you think that we are approaching the idea of accountability and transparency in governance at all? Do you think that we should be doing more to make sure that as we're discussing more powers, we are also equally discussing how we ensure that those powers are executed in the best interest of the people? We're not doing that, but that's what we should be doing. As a matter of fact, the THA, when you study the proposed act before the Island Government Act and, uh, you know, before the parliament, you see more power, more power, more power. Mm -hmm. And we want more power, we want more. 
but you really have not seen any proposal, any ideas, or discuss, even a discussion in terms of how we, do we protect people. Because I'm saying here, we have a rich history in Tobago of nepotism and corruption and, and, and so on. That is that is also well, alive and well in Tobago. So don't let's fool ourselves and think, but, you know, Tobago, yeah, yeah we have all, we understand all that. But we also abuse each other in so many ways on the island. And I'm saying that people who are traumatized, Tr Trinidad and Tobago is a traumatized country, you know, traumatized from all the years of corruption and, and, and nepotism and, 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 and political uh, favors and so on. So how do we protect the people? I can't support you. I'm, I'm truly scared to, to talk about it, to, um, you know, just the thought of you having so much power, additional powers. I, I, it's a scary, a scary um, situation for me. What are some of your solutions in terms of having that accountability and that transparency? Well, what do you think some of those mechanisms should look like? Well, you know, first thing, we have to strengthen those institutions that will hold people accountable. We have to strengthen those. And those are some of the institutions that, they, they, that is in the Constitution, the Integrity Commission. The Integrity Commission should have the power to arrest people and to prosecute people, not persecute. Yeah. You know, politicians have no responsibility over, um, over the Integrity Commission. People in public office, and the reason, one of the reasons why I believe that we, we become a lawless society is because, you know, we have not held public officials accountable for anything at all over the years. And so when the society realizes that, listen, the them fellas get away, then, you know, what, what, you know. So I'm saying that those are the institutions you have to strengthen. One, to hold public officials accountable. Second, to allow and to protect citizens to grieve their governments, the government. You have to protect them from that from political victimization and, and all that kind of stuff. Once, once you start strengthening those things, at the forefront of all the discussion, you're talking about autonomy and constitutional reform. Once you strengthen, as a matter of fact, before you even enter the discussion, you strengthen those institutions, give them power. People start becoming, feeling safer. People start feeling confident. People start feeling, okay, I can say this and I can, you know, address this issue without repercussions. And well, that's interesting, you know, that, that idea of let's strengthen our, our, our accounted, accountability systems first before we have more powers. Yeah, more powers. Let's strengthen those things. Let's give the, 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 the society constitutional protections and guarantees that, listen, no discrimination will go um, unnoticed, unpunished. No corruption will go. That's what you want. So all this thing about power, and we want more power, and the, the, and, the, and, 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 and the THA and the, the, the Fali administration trying to write up document on the and secret document, and we will only see it when it's done, and throw it out and say, well, this is what you want for the big That is ludicrous. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not representing me. It's not your personal and private business. It matters as important as this should be on the table from the day one. This is what we're proposing, everybody. Send in your two cents. As a matter of fact, this matter requires more than two cents and three cents. So we want to have an intelligent discussion on the subject. And I am not here to, to, to just throw ideas and you and tell you, well, you know, you elect me, so it means that I can think for you. And that's basically what you're saying. Now, from the bills that are already there, you know, and even all that we've went through in the past, do you, did you see any bit of accountability systems within those bills that you said that, yes, this is good, or this can be worked on and built up so that we can ensure that when we have those politicians and public officers in place, they can execute those powers in the best interest of the people. Well, you wouldn't see, and one, one, one doesn't expect, I personally doesn't expect to see accountability within the, the, the legislation. But what you have is the accountability system outside, looking in, making sure everybody, you know, everybody play the game right and fair. So you really don't want it, in the, so, but people must know that in the back of their head, that listen, if you falter here, there's a group of people looking at you or a system that is looking at you to make sure ensure that you do your job right and you do your job fairly, but not your personal thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So it don't have to be in the legislation. Now, notwithstanding, I see some things in the, in the, in the proposal that is, I know it's going to be more powerful for Tobago. It's going to be good for Tobago, notwithstanding the challenges that we face in terms of accountability and so on. But I also know that if we get that part of the accountability correct, this place will take off based on what, we, what was being proposed. The problem for me is that you people going to use it against each other. People going to use it in favor of their friends and their families and so on. And that is the scary proposition as far as the internal part of it is concerned. Because it's really an island government, island management or island government piece of document. That's not to do with autonomy, but you're going to be given more power. And I've seen also you have a history of abusing that power. So therefore, I want to ensure that you are able to, that, 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 that some kind of accountability is, 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 is afoot. All right. Well, with that, we're going to have to end our conversation this morning because we are out of time. But I want to thank you so much, Mr. Philip, for being on with us and for sharing your perspective on these matters. Appreciate you so much, Candy. Thank you. All right, viewers, so please don't go anywhere. We still have quite a lot more coming up for you after the break. The energy filled the skies.